Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and this is the first update in a while, so I want to bring up to speed on a couple of things, and what we're going to do is we're going to start off, first of all, with some tweets from Digibycoin. Right, so what we have here is a bit of a summary of some of the things that have been going on recently, and I want to kind of go over these step by step, because I think that these are really quite important. Um, so in this first one, they basically say... Uh, a bit of an acknowledgement here about this not being just the one official source, which I think is really quite cool, and it's really good to see this coming from them as well, so I'm, I'm grateful to see that. Um, they carry on down here to say that everyone's voices are frequently retweeted here, as everyone's contribution is paramount to the growth of the ecosystem, uh, which is cool. More of an acknowledgement, I suppose, about having a multitude of different places that people can get that kind of information from. I think that's really good to see. Um, they've also acknowledged here the GitHub and the contributions on there, which is cool. Uh, so as you can see, there are a number of people here that all do have a variety of access to the Digibyte core uh, GitHub organization. Uh, some of these have different access. They have gone and reinstated mine specifically as a reviewer. Uh, now that's okay, that basically means that it is a little bit more cut down compared to certain other things, but it is great to see that acknowledgement, and it's also really fantastic to see some other faces in there as well, uh, such as Matthew uh, and Barry have also been invited, so really great to see that too. Uh, anyone is free to work on and further the Digibyte cause, including fundraising and bounties, so that's quite cool, I really appreciate that acknowledgement as well. Uh, they go on to say here, what you do with your Digibyte is your own business, nor hours, I think they mean not hours, um, but that's quite cool. So anyone is free to raise funds for whatever purpose they wish. Um, haven't yet seen any kind of sharing of the fundraiser from them, but still I think that this is a really great step and I'm very grateful to see it. Uh, they clarify here as well, the supply curve issue that is found is not urgent or critical. Now I've never said it is urgent or critical. Um, I specifically want the acknowledgement though and it's really great that we have this acknowledgement because it has been left for quite some time we were seeing uh, a bunch of mixed messages about uh, if it even existed so it's really great here um, to see this as well uh, come to fruition we're already it says here devs will make sure only 21 billion digibyte are ever mined uh, i'll come back to that later on Great here to see, uh, they mentioned me, they mentioned Matthew, they mentioned Yoshi um, for the documentation and things around it, really awesome. Um, and yeah, big shout out to Matthew for being the first person who really took this seriously when I raised it with him. Uh, he also confirmed that even my original math was off. Uh, and Yoshi actually was the one who originally found the infinite supply issue all the way back, uh, I think it was in March of earlier this year. Um, so that's it's really great to see that acknowledgement for him as well there. Uh, super cool as well to to have this acknowledgement here for Barry and for Black Miner. Uh, and in fact, not a lot of people know, but I was in a chat room uh, towards the end of last year, which we can see the results of here with the team from Black Miner, specifically uh, myself, Matthew, uh, and a couple of others basically uh, got them involved and said, look, what we are interested in doing is kind of a version 1.1 of Autocrypt. We want to do a a small upgrade to try and weed out the possibility of there being any uh, ASICs on the network. If they are FPGA miners, then that's fine because they can reprogram themselves. They reprogram themselves every 10 days anyway, so what's one more? It's really not going to matter too much. Um, and that was kind of the, the thinking behind this. So we were in discussions toward the end of last year, um, and, and they've gone and put this up at the start of the year here in January. We've got feedback from both Matthew and from Barry, which is really quite cool. Uh, so there's still a little bit of discussion about if we are going to go ahead with this specifically in version 8, uh, what that kind of an upgrade will look like, uh, is there a necessity for it, but at the end of the day one of the things that we're kind of thinking is it's not exactly going to hurt, so why not err on the side of caution and and to do that kind of thing. It's, it's something that's being considered and, and any feedback on that uh, would be greatly appreciated. Now keeping in mind though that the only core evidence that we do have at the moment about ASIC's existence versus not is we know that a recent mining pool that was started up uh, is currently making around about 25% of all of the Odocrypt blocks. They're using existing black miner FPGA hardware, which is cool. So they are using FPGAs. They've just started up. They're finding 20% of the blocks. So that kind of errs us towards the, you know, there isn't any, any, any ASIC. Still a possibility though. 
Um, but here, here at the at the end, they basically they say uh, recent evidence showed at the end of the day there is a need for clear, concise, and open communication among developers, community members, and others being paramount. Let's all work together to ensure this happens. So I think that's really quite cool to have that acknowledgement too. Uh, so like I mentioned before, though, about Digibyte's uh, maximum supply, uh, and well, I suppose the lack thereof at the moment, uh, I, I, I took the initiative a couple nights ago uh, after a few beers. In fact, I'm not a developer, but uh, somehow we've managed to come up with this and get it submitted. Um, so I specifically mention here, as per always, I'm not a developer and things will likely break, hence allowing edits from maintainers being ticked. I'm aware that the unit tests haven't been corrected to reflect this change either, but I want to get the ball rolling, uh, which was really quite cool. So uh, already straight away uh, after I made a, a message, I think it was within about an hour, JNS Chalk actually put something up, uh, provided some advice on where it needed to be placed. Uh, and they also wrote a testing application to test the changes that I was proposing, which is really quite cool. So if we scroll all the way down here, uh, we can see we basically get down here and then the supply stops at 21 billion uh, once we hit that particular block. Now it's not precisely uh, 21 billion at the moment. The reason for this is because we will adjust this particular number. It's done based on a particular block height. And the reason that we want to do it based on a block height is very similar to the way that Bitcoin does it. So what we do is we basically say this is where we expect we're going to get to 21 billion and that's where it's going to basically be hard capped and we're forcing it to uh, a zero subsidy. Now this will be reviewed when we review the supply curve and we tweak the smoothness of it which is also being handled uh, at the moment I know that Matthew's been going over a couple of bits and pieces there as well uh, as he did back in January we'd originally put it uh, to change in May we've obviously gone past May but we are we're gonna set a date in the future for these adjustments and again it will be then a nice smooth curve all the way down to 21 billion which is really cool to see Right, so in terms of the actual changes are uh, relatively minor and the best part is, is you can actually run this on the core wallet at the moment and it won't break anything because it doesn't break consensus until obviously we reach that particular block height, which could be, I think it was like 12 years into the future or something. So given everybody's going to be upgrading to version 8 and then potentially a version 9, 10, etc. well before then, completely not a problem. Um, so with that in mind here, we basically change, uh, we create a new uh, final block subsidy height. Uh, we check to make sure that if we are under that, then, then we're all good. But if we do go over it, otherwise, force the subsidy to zero. Nice and simple, which is exactly the same as what Bitcoin do. So that's very much in keeping of, of that kind of, we're straying a little bit from Bitcoin, but also in this way, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring it back. I uh, haven't had any other feedback, though, aside from this from JNS Chalk, which was pretty cool. The validation of it uh, was fantastic. Uh, so looking forward to hearing more over the coming days. One more thing in terms of Barry and the work that's being done for Digibyte version 8. Like I mentioned, he's been working hard on this. Uh, we've already reached 125,000 Digibyte, which is really cool to see. If you are interested in donating, I would encourage you to go here. We've got this Medium article. Uh, which you can go and check out. Everything goes 100% directly to him. And you can basically scroll down. Now as part of this, we go over what this is all for, what's going to happen. Yeah, so this is where we, we talk about what the donations are about and things. And there's also the donation address further down here. Again, this all goes directly to him as well. So a huge shout out. Thank you to Barry, because I know he's been working hard on that throughout the week, uh, despite everything that's been going on. Anyway, that's going to be all from me for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this update. Uh, consider leaving a like, subscribe, hit the share button. Uh, sing out in the comment section down below if you do have any questions, or you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at DGB underscore chilling. We'll talk to you in the next video, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.